we at symbiosis symbiosis school of banking and finance provide two years mba program niche in banking and finance so we thought to have a webinar on this upcoming topic and which every one of you who are listening to me are aware of many of you want to make your career in this line so we thought let's discuss couple of things which are important for you to understand couple of things which are important for you to know fintech is a buzzword these days every one of us whether we are uh, any of the stakeholders so whether you are students whether you are into bfsi sector whether you are parents of those who want to enter in this this particular area whether your friends are into technology we all want to understand what is this fintech all about how we can enter in this line what is new which is happening in the fintech so we decided let's talk let's talk for half an hour 45 minutes for you people to understand that how fintech world move what is happening in and across uh, globally and in and across india so i'll take another half an hour 45 minutes for all of you to understand help you to understand the fintech in general specific to india so you are all most welcome uh, the chat is enabled for me so i can see if you have any questions you can write in the chat box i'll uh, address i'll try to address the answers for all these questions in this session i would request kindly show a little involvement by uh, by throwing some questions so that we can understand what millennials are thinking what generation z is thinking when it's come when it comes to fintech i have made made this presentation very niche very specific there are many things which can be covered if you are interested we'll have follow up sessions on wealth tech robo advisory reg tech and many more things so we'll be waiting for a feedback from you people let us know what all areas in fintech you are interested to know because you are as an individual might be interested to know more about few specific things so let's move ahead let me stop my video and uh, let's start with the presentation so i'll help you out to understand few important things here when we talk about fintech and financial technology as broad there are major things which are been associated you can see and these are all figures which are being taken from several research done across the world globally with respect to india so these are the uh, facts and figures which are being taken either from deloitte working paper pwc paper we have taken from business standard economic times and many more and broadly these figures will help all of us to understand fintech in a better way so let's start this there are approximately and these are all latest uh, data facts and figures which i'm showing you so there are approximately 7000 plus fintech startups in india believe me business standard research says that till september 2022 and india is one of the world largest fintech market next to the us and china so research has been done which says that the adoption rate of fintech globally is 64% mind me i'll repeat it is 64% wherein india is adopting fintech at the rate of 87% so you can see where we will be in coming couple of years when it comes to fintech adoption and this is the marketplace where you are going to work these 7000 plus fintech startups which are going to explore themselves in the fintech market when you talk about fintech and when we talk about many things which are related to fintech we talk about globally so you can see on my screen this is 2019 data the figure pretty looks similar we are third largest when it comes to fintech adoption what are the companies and what are the areas so let's talk about them many of you might have heard about wealth tech you have heard about payment and lending where fintech is coming reg tech insurance tech so this particular screen helps you to understand that what are the areas so bangalore as a city is building up mumbai as a city and delhi as a city they are building up on the fintech driven companies so i'll help you to understand mumbai delhi bangalore these are the cities where the fintech companies are growing and coming up in the big way majorly in the payment area so followed by payment is lending we are going to see in the couple of sessions now that how this 
payment sector has picked up, how this lending sector has picked up when it comes to fintech. So as I said, India is one of the uh, biggest hub of uh, fintech these days. Dollar fifty billion in 2021 estimated to grow to dollar one fifty million billion in 2025. India fintech industry ecosystem seems of payment, lending, wealth tech, personal financial management, insurance tech, reg tech, and many more. As of July 2022, and this is very important, students understand. India has 23 fintech companies which has gained a unicorn status with a valuation of dollar. 1 billion. So slowly, all the fintech companies which are being developing in India, which are gaining pace in India, are gaining pace in unicorn status also. Okay, so this, uh, this is a landscape. So you can see 2002, 10 scenario, and slowly 2020 scenario. In every sector, from payments to insurance, to lending, to consumer lending, SME lending, P2P lending, new entrants. So this is very important. I'll take two, three minutes when we talk about new entrants, reg tech, fintech enablers. You can see companies across. None of the uh, BFSI area or sector is left. None of the sector is left where fintech has not entered. It might be that the company is small. It might be they have just entered. But you can see in this matrix everywhere, whether it is SME lending or trade finance, we can see fintech driven companies across. And students, believe me, this is the market space for all of you. You are going to work here. This is the market space which will provide you the opportunity. Get up. You have to gain a lot of confidence. You have to gain a lot of knowledge when it comes to fintech because you are going to work here. This is Gone are the days for traditional banking. This is something which will help you out. This is something where you see your future in. Roadmap of Indian fintech products. So early adoption, growing technologies, and new innovation. What was early adoption? Old techniques, core banking, insurance, lending, ATM, POS services, etc. <coughs> As and when technologies are growing, you can see mobile banking, Finance, analytics, remittance, where Paytm came in. So Paytm changed the world. Paytm changed the world for fintech industry. Paytm existence. I'll take a case study in the end of Paytm, how it, ex how it came into existence, where it is, and how it changed the whole scenario. Whether it is Paytm, Razorpay, Instamojo, all of these are fintech-driven companies. And they're coming up in big way. And the new innovations, all of us know. Personal financial management, PFM, Bitcoins. I am sure majority of you might be investing in Bitcoin. So we'll talk about that in detail. Mobile wallets, cash cards. So I'll repeat myself. And this is the data which has been taken from Nescom. So this was an early adoption date. Growing technologies and new innovations. Everything is coming up in big way when it comes to fintech and this is the area and these are the companies where you can start your career too you can see yourself here why we want to enter here what is the why why there is a need of fintech because this is the requirement of us bfsi sector can't move ahead if the technology is not being incorporated here not only bfsi they, they, these days there is agritech agricultural is moving for technology so edutech Agritech, all these are technology-driven platforms. Again, this is an Indian landscape where you can see Paytm, payments. Payments came the first uh, when it comes to fintech, followed by lending, followed by insurtech, followed by investment tech. Investment tech is also known as wealth tech, Zerodha. I am sure. I am sure all of you know about Zerodha. And if you don't know, I would request you go back and check what is Zerodha, how it is helping especially Generation Z and Millennials to invest. What are the platforms which Zerodha is providing? How convenient and easy investing and trading Zerodha made. And believe me, at a cheaper cost, the amount you invested and you paid to the advisors with Zerodha and things are very easy. Everything is on your fingertips, whether it is rental coins, bankbazaar.com, many of you might have heard. 
you might have uh, heard about lending card again in the lending area this is coming up in big way capital float they are looking for people like you who have technology knowledge plus interested in bfsi in the wealth in the wealth areas they are coming up pin so pin card all these companies are existing in india they are gaining pace they have a good strong market capitalization and they are working together so that razor pay so that india can become a fintech market place so this is a screenshot or this is a snapshot of 10 most known fintech companies when it comes to market capitalization so what is what are those paytm we all have heard about paytm.com funding 2.77 billion vijay shekhar sharma is the person behind that they they are into payment so you can see from this chart itself that payment is a gateway where the fintech market enters in india payment followed by lending insurance tech investec blockchain and many others so there is uh, paytm there is moviquick there is financial software system bank bazaar incred i would request who, those who don't know about incred kindly go and check the website incred incred is also coming up big way and they are helping in the bfsi sector from lending side from lending side lending card pinu payment bag again a very big brand these days and they are also towards the payment side so these are top 10 fintech driven companies in india making their way taking india to the next level they have made possible the adoption rate of 87% for indians where globally it is only 64% so i would request all of you who are actually interested to make their careers in fintech market or fintech industry kindly go through at least these top 10 fintech companies you will get an idea what are the products how they drive how fintech market work rather than not only top 10 let's talk about top 50 fintech companies or startups in india we have 7000 plus i'm just talking about top 10 and top 50 for you to understand things to give a better clarity there are many from these you might have not known but grow grow is something which every one of us know it's again an investment app qwell again an important investment and fintech driven company i i being a faculty and a director has been working very closely with couple of the fintech companies you can see here to understand their functioning and their requirement because we provide them the manpower so we should know what they need we should have a clarity find labs again a good strong brand when it comes to fintech so there are key fintech players in 2021 that is cash free coin dcx i just said many of you are investing in crypto so coin dcx is an app which i think majority of you might have used money tap neo yap these are the fintech players in india so since, since last 5 10 minutes i'm trying to emphasize why fintech why you should know about fintech because you can't run away after demonetization after financial inclusion after jan dhan yojana fintech is coming up in big way in india and you have to understand that this is the future we have to understand in detail that this is something which all of us should know about as per bcg and picky research they say that the fintech sector valuation dollar 150 to 160 billion by 2025 and believe me this is not a small valuation uh, which we are talking about for any industry or a sector translating to an incremental value creation of approximately dollar 100 billion which has been growing again a research which says that fintech startups in last 3 years have second highest in india right behind the us and china and i think we have left china way behind when it comes to lending and payment again i i just quoted this research stating that fintech highest fintech adoption rate is 87% you can see that and this is something which plays an important role 87% the fintech market in india has valued at around 100 1920 billion so this is what is important let's see a small video so that you can understand the future of banking in a better way and we all can understand that where we are going and what is the future
that will take a couple of minutes. We have just tried to understand how broad is fintech market in India? How broad? You name the BFSI area and the fintech companies are coming up. And that's why it has been said that India is a place where you can develop your fintech market. So if India is a place of investment where people want to develop fintech everywhere, you being the budding managers should understand this market better. And this is the uh, uh, idea behind floating fintech as one of the topics for this webinar. For you to understand that fintech is not only the term students, believe me, this is the area where you're going to work. You cannot run away. Gone are the days for the old banking. Now, the banks also need virtual RMs. Those RMs who understand the market in a better way. So let's see this video. In the near future, banks will be invisible. So I am sure I am being heard. Is this video audible to everyone? If Joe yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Banking will be more intertwined in the lives of consumers than ever before. Accessing banking services anytime, anywhere, without the need to queue in a bank. Banking is in the palm of your hand. Traveling smarter with cashless multi-currency exchange, mobile payment, and more through all-in-one e-wallet. Get personalized offers and product promotions in the right place at the right time. Smart banking opens up a new world of possibilities. Faster payment system enables instant interbank transfer and real-time P2P payments. Intelligent chatbots and virtual assistants make banking easier for everyday consumers. Advisory on investments is now an automated process through robo-advisors. The future of cross-border payment will be as convenient as domestic ones, enabling payments to be executed in seconds, sending and receiving funds quickly and securely to anyone, anywhere in the world with full transparency. Powered by swift global payment innovation, businesses will be able to track the status of the cross-border payment instantly, from instructions to destination, end to end. Through big data analytics, banks can leverage deeper customer insights to provide predictive recommendations, seize the cross-selling opportunities, and build stronger customer relationships. Taking advantage of the blockchain-based smart contract, customers enjoy full automation of transaction process with just a few clicks. Digital transformation is shaking up the banking industry. With the rise of virtual banking and digital bank, traditional banks who have yet to adapt will be left behind. Capitalizing on the confluence of digital technologies to revolutionize customer experience. Enhance service offerings with open banking APIs. Seamlessly integrating banking services to every aspect of life. As a trusted digital transformation partner, PCCW Solutions bridges evolving. So I am sure everyone of you after going through this video understood the importance of fintech and how fintech is coming up. So gone are the days they are trying to say, and I am sure many of you have never visited the bank. You might have visited a bank virtually. Everything which is related to banking transactions, everything, this video helps you to understand that if you are still Attached with the old technology, you cannot move ahead. For moving ahead, you need to work along with the technology. You have to move along with the technology. So let's move ahead in the same direction. This video is just to help you understand that this is 
this is how fast the fintech industry is moving this is how fast the industry as such is moving so fintech as a term talks about financial technology it is by development of process product application and new business model all four comes together and we are talking about financial technology and fintech driven technology fintech is more as a term as a broader term when you talk about a growing industry it serve both the consumers and the business that means the end users and the business from mobile banking to insurance to crypto to investment app so they have termed the word call as robo advisory students i help you to understand robo advisory is again coming up in a big way the next webinar we are planning on the same that how robo advisory is working are people interested to uh, uh, invest on the advice being given by some algorithms based on the facts and figures collected by from you so a profile testing is done and on the basis of that the investment is done that is termed as robo advisory so under wealth tech this is a term called robo advisory where people are looking for experts who can help them to develop these algorithms for investment so fintech again i said this is another video i'll skip this video we'll talk about more content here you can go back and see this video this has been sourced from cnbc very interesting video again talking about a fintech uh, landscape and the industry coming up so when you talk about fintech as a whole we talk about growing effect so according to financial stability board that is fsb fintech is technologically enabled financial innovation that could result in the new business model applications processes and products so i just showed you the definition is fintech consist of only business model no it's hand on hand it's business model application processes and product all three taken together i would request everyone to note down the questions if any and will you can message me whatsapp me the questions right now or later also so finance and technology what is finance bank payment and bfc what is technology we are talking about cloud we are talking about different kinds of hardware and software different kinds of visualization tools like tableau and python i'm going to talk about them in the next part of my session so when you talk about fintech it's technologically enabled innovation which include all application processes product and business model in totality this is very important see this picture and this plays a very important role here what is this they are trying to say that fintech in 2021 and what holds in 2022 so dollar 9 billion raised by fintech up by 200% year on year growth 12 new unicorns are been added pay you by bill desk at dollar 4.7 billion bharat pay and centrum svcs acquire pmc bank paytm policy bazaar planned their ipo there are couple of ipos which have came and there are others which are on the way to come in couple of years what's planned in 2022 funding momentum to continue further consolidations through mna more ipos lined up and neo bank and bnpl buy now pay later bnpl means students buy now pay later and who can understand the best other than rather than my uh, generation z and millennials you totally survive on this buy now and pay later so this is something which shows you that what happens in fintech industry in 2021 and what are the plans for the coming years so fintech ecosystem is divided into four different kinds of uh, uh, companies or sectors or area they are called as a b c and d let's talk about a a large well established financial institutions like bank of america they are coming under as and they are also adopting fintech these b tech big large tech companies like apple google facebook twitter you might have seen people are making payment with the help of facebook gpay so in couple couple of months you can make fds via gpay pix deposit so gpay is coming up and it might have launched that you can make fds pix deposits with the help of your gpay account you can make payment with the help of twitter and facebook social media handles so see where the fintech industry is going and what you need to do if you want to be on pace in pace with this industry these are the companies that provide infrastructure and technologies like fiserv 
फर्स्ट डेटा मास्टर कार्ड दीज आर दी कंपनीज अगेन तो ऑल दीज आर इंटर रिलेटेड बिग कंपनीज टेक कंपनीज कंपनीज विच हेल्प एज एन इंटरमीडिएटरीज एंड डी एज डिस्ट्रप्टर्स सो मोबाइल पेमेंट्स automated investing peer to peer and uh, lending that's prosper and other things which are coming up i hope i am with the pace with my students and you people are getting what we are trying to highlight here so fintech segment insights payment lending insurance tech wealth tech bank tech they are coming up the payment segment companies m wallet ppis merchant payment pos services are also in, uh, uh, picking up the pace along with cryptocurrency the principal function of bank tech sector is to utilize the data the data points like financial transaction spending pattern and etc examples of few fintech driven companies under mobile payment app payment services operated under financial regulations and performed from form or via mobile services contactless technologies there was one video which i'll show you later which is based on contactless technology that is rfid many of you might have heard this near field communication personal finance apps zerodha grow these are personal finance app practice of lending money to the individuals or business and funding a project venture by raising small amount like earn wealth and many more so key growth drivers why fintech took a big way for india why fintech has come uh, come up uh, such a large for india widespread identity formalization that is aadhaar 1.2 billion enrollment and due to which fintech has taken up second dan jan dhan yojana so i just talked about it 1 plus billion bank accounts are there you need to handle so that was one of the trigger point that fintech uh, uh, ecosystem has developed high smartphone penetration everyone you talk about a vegetable vendor he has a gp and the smartphone available you talk about your uh, maids working at your place you talk about anyone the level of smartphone penetration leads to fintech adoption so the apps and the utility might be different but it is across india stake sets of apis for business and startup growing disposable income of indians yes the average pay at which we started when i say we means 80s 90s people started their job and the way you people are starting your job i am working with b school and i can easily say that my 20 years of experience say that b school salary has also grown at an 100% or 200% speed what they used to get in 2005 when i started or 2004 when i started my career and what my students are getting 19 20 lakh package so the growing disposable income of indians key government initiatives such as upi and digital india middle class expansion by 2030 india will add 1 40 million middle income and 21 uh, million high income households so hni clients and ultra hni clients have increased in india and all these things taken together led to an increase in fintech market in india let's move ahead and talk about opportunity driving financial inclusions in india providing financial assistance to msmes enhancing customer experience and transparency all these are opportunities which are related to fintech industry in india what is fintech we have seen so i'll skip all these things top 5 fintech companies open that is bank open asia's first neo bank offered by india what is the concept of neo bank students i'll help you to understand there is no physical bank exist they don't have any branches no physical bank like hdfc excess sbi they have physical uh, banks neo banks will not have any physical bank everything all banking transactions including their rms everything is virtual it is difficult to believe it is hard to believe when you talk about the old way of doing banking yes but now this is the only way and this is being taken very well by all the uh, growing or young indian uh, population then national payment corporation of india they have made major uh, major changes where to bring fintech to the part bharat bill payment system and upi that is unified payment interface you talk about lazy pay that is pay you all these fintech companies are changing the uh, ecosystem of fintech in india so i was just talking about neo bank 
If the first wave of fintech include the digital payment, insure tech, and wealth tech, the second wave talk about new. So India has not seen much growth in new, but it, believe me, in coming years, you will tell us, Kineha, madam, we are working now with new banks. They are digital. They are usually digital only banks which has no physical presence. You can see on my screen, offering banking services. They don't have physical presence. Digital only banks. Over the top new banks are standalone digital platform offering offering any kind of uh, payment, any kind of partnership with banks, FIs, and other financial institutions. So they are right now in India. They are in partnership. They don't exist solo. They are in partnership, like Pay, Razor Pay. Neo wisely, these are neo banks, and the third ones are digital only brands created by traditional banks. So, Digibank by DBS Bank, you know, by SBI, Kotak 811 by Kotak Bank. But digital proper neo bank will not have any word, uh, physical presence, they will be totally digital and providing right now in India. No, none of the neo bank is existing alone, they are in partnership with banks. FIs and fintech. But very soon, you will see new banks where you people are working, existing here in India also. So there is an example of new bank, a video I have taken for new bank. Uh, due to time constraint, let me let me move ahead. But I am sure you will go back and see this video that how new bank function, how the functioning of new bank happens. If the time permit, I'll come back and show you this. So let's move ahead. Let's talk about few more things. So these are the components. These are the components when it comes to fintech industry. So you need to have consumer, you need to have service provider, you need to have payment institution, and you need to have mobile network operators. Fintech industry growing, 34% of installment handling trial by 32% in banking and 12% in exchange open and private markets. Fintech structure growth drivers are there. Fintech sector is everywhere. The, the basic growth driver is cloud-based solution. That's a technology development, big data. And that's why every one of us want you to have an expert in big, da big data analytics, because that is something on which fintech industry is working. Fintech industry students are working only on data, cloud-based computing and big data. You need to understand how big data function, how to extract important things from the data available. Parallelly, market is changing. Earlier, none of us were online. These days, everything is online with the help of mobile and internet. Mobile payment apps uh, coming up big way and everything can be done. I just gave you an example with GPay. You can make an FD. You can make international transaction. You can make financial transaction. You, you need not to uh, have your account. Then also you can transfer the money. So you can see uh, mobile payment usage in India. Paytm is the highest used. This is the July 9, 2019 data. You can update it further, but Paytm, GPay, Amazon Pay, these are the apps which are being used. How NFCs work in contactless payment system that is called as near field communication. We can see this later. The process, we can talk about RBI norms. We can talk about contactless technologies, how they are working how RF uh, ID technology or a near field communication is working. Contactless payment do not require signatures or personal identification. Transaction sizes of the cards are limited. So these are things which we need to keep. Personal finance management app, this is very important. Many of you might have taken loan, loan comparing different kinds of loan with the help of Bank Bazaar, ET Money, Clear Text. We tried to find out how much is the tax assessment for this particular year. Reliance LPI for insurance app. So insurance, which was an untapped market, is still a little untapped market in India, but technology is coming up in a big way in insurance. You might have seen many of you, Amit Khan's ad of making insurance in a couple of seconds. That is insure tech we are talking about. Technology-driven insurance. Peer-to-peer -peer lending. Easily done with the help of technology. You just need P2P platform and it is done whether it is a loan arrangement for a small amount or a bigger amount. That is termed as peer-to-peer -peer lending. An individual investor who want to get a better returns on their cash saving than a bank. So global fintech investment has been increasing. Yeah, this is uh, a case study, which I was saying I would like to cover. So Paytm is India's biggest fintech startup 
founded in August 2010 by Vijay Shekhar Sharma. The startup offer versatile installment e-wallets and business strategies. 2030, it became a prepaid, portable, and DTH energizer stage, and later information card, postpaid, versatile, and landline charges installment. By January 2014, Paytm Pocketbook and the Indian Railways and Uber included it in uh, it as an install uh, installment option. 2016 was the year when Paytm enrolled client base developed. From 11.8 billion in August 2014 to 104 million in August 2015, where Paytm realized that India has a market for fintech. People are inclined towards technology. In 2017, Paytm becomes India's first installment application to transfer 100 million application downloads. Introduce Paytm Gold, then Paytm Bank, then 2017 it comes with Paytm Mall application, 2018 Paytm UPI, no extra charges. Additionally, Paytm for business, Paytm for individual, and then the sky is the horizon for pay Paytm. In 2019, Paytm joined forces for, with Citibank to dispatch the credit card. 2021. Much awaited Paytm IPO came into existence. Whether it did good or not, that's a different line of discussion. We can take another session to discuss IPOs. But then this is a way how Paytm came up in a big way, followed by now Zerodha is coming up, Grow is coming up. There is uh, there are so many fintech driven companies who saw Paytm developing and they thought why not to enter a BFSI sector. What caused the rise of fintech? I just said. See this. This is an Indian lending fintech ecosystem. These are we as an investor is here, and this is the market on which you are coming. Students understand. This is a landscape where you have an opportunity to grow, and none of you, I am sure, none of you would not like to work in an industry which is growing industry. Fintech is a growing industry. If you don't know technology. you cannot sustain long in bfsi area for any profile coming in bfsi these days fintech is required we are working as an education institute working closely with the recruiters and we know recruiters coming since last couple of years and focusing more on fintech on fintech driven things whether it is fintech driven inclusions you are talking about whether you are talking about they ask if the housing loan companies are coming are your students smart enough to understand and act as a catalyst between the bank or the housing finance company or nbfcs and the customers or the app developers so you talk about this landscape and this plays a very important role and i would expect all of you to go through and understand this let's move ahead career opportunity so this is somewhere i will uh, invest another 5 10 minutes of mine this is something for which we decided that let's do a fintech talk with generation z and millennial this was the purpose because career opportunities are coming in big way data science i just said data scientist is something which is been required analysis visualization tableau and python are visualization tool and one is a language where students are expected to know about it how do they function how to work on tableau and python artificial intelligence and machine learning how does it happen so there is there are biometrics which are coming up which will be voice biometrics so i have recently read somewhere voice biometrics will say you just speak and the payment is done so this is a biological feature of someone which is been considered biological feature can be eyes movement can be thumb impression which is usually been done but now it can be voice which is coming up voice biometrics so how artificial intelligence and machine learning helps wealth tech and robo advising so i am sure if you will revert us back and give us feedbacks we'll take robo advisory and wealth tech as a very good session for the next time reg tech cyber security so everything has pros and cons if fintech is coming up in big way there are some security issues also students understand when i say security issues means with data available you can do anything with the data so we need to have a robust security when you are talking about uh, fintech industry 
blockchain, crypto, mobile app development, peer-to-peer -peer lending, crowdfunding. Your idea is good. Many, many people are interested to invest. That is crowdfunding. So these are the global fintech uh, areas where you can work. Capital market may fintech, you can work, insurance, payment bills. Ex exciting role for driving a fintech firm. So these are the roles. A product manager who has an idea about how financial institutions and merchant wants. So what uh, merchant want and what financial institution can provide. He act as a catalyst. UI and UX and graphic designers. So user interface designers are required. You need a content writer and social media writer in fintech firms. You need sales and marketing person in fintech companies. You need data scientists in fintech. You need cloud management. You need fintech driven persons who understand cloud management for cybersecurity and governance. You need product engineers. So students, see, in fintech industry, if you have an idea about how technology works, these are the areas where we expect our students to show their skill sets. This is where the students should have an idea. So it is not only technical engineers we need. No, normal BCom, BBA students have a fair understanding about this, wherein we can provide them with uh, good technical ideas also, technical knowledge also. So taxation, legal and regulatory deals and investment due diligence, accelerators, program knowledge of partnership and mentorship, strategy execution operation. These are the areas in which fintech and innovations are working hand in hand. Again, career avenues in fintech, fintech startup you can work with, any advisory firm these days, you name it, and they're talking about technology platform. You, If you have your own business also, you might be talking about technology in that business. Accelerators, educational institute. There are several edutech companies coming up in big way. Incubant financial institutions and many more. So when this is the requirement, when we need people here, what are the skill sets required? So Java is something which is required, which we expect. So there are several companies, including JP Morgan, Gold, Goldman Sachs, UBS coming to campus, coming to SSBF also, Symbiosis also, where they expect our students to have a basic understanding. It need not to say that all my students need to be engineers. No. But then a basic understanding is required. Same business and finance analyst. So you need to be good in analyzing data. In analyzing and extracting and analyzing data. So banks are hiring process change the specialist who understand how to overhaul the back office product and the compliance report. Another C, C is a language which is required. Murex, again important, MX.3. So a lending enterprise, capital market technology platform, most jobs that want this knowledge are less about specialists in the language, but more focused on having familiarity with it in a broader list of technical skills. And last but not the least, Python. So we are providing our students with all of these by providing them a different kinds of workshops, training, calling the experts so that they can understand. So I would request all of you to go through and understand what is Python, how it is required. Can we learn it? So major banks like JP Morgan and Bank of America, Merrill Lynch are employing thousands of developers cracking out Python codes. It is becoming a mainstream language for many software products. So again, all those who have an idea about this, excellent. But those who don't have can get an idea. We can start working from now. It is something which needs practice which needs understanding challenges a broader challenges of fintech industry is cyber attacks data privacy and issues difficulties in regulation there are many regulatory authorities for example cryptocurrency bitcoin litcoin again a session can be taken on what is crypto how does it function how we invest how it is considered to be a virtual currency but it's still not get a regulatory yes from Indian market, from Indian regulation. Way ahead, guarant, uh, guarding against the cyber crimes, educating consumer. Fintech can be used better if you know about it, you educate the customers. So Fintech is something which is very, which need to be used very cautiously, whether it is a mobile payment being done, whether it is a payment to be done online, net banking, Data protection and education plays a very important role. 
So that's why personal data protection bill has been passed in 2019 and it has been amended this year. So with this, we want to conclude that FinTech has a potential to transform other financial services like insurance, investment, remittance, and however, regulations must help not hinder its evolution. FinTech is coming up 20% Indian FinTech sector to grow at 20% by 2023, that is next year. Students understand you are entering an industry which is at a growing pace. Every industry will come to a saturation. But if you can make maximum of an industry which is at a growing pace, this will help you to develop yourself in coming number of years. FinTech is something which should be taken strongly, which can be addressed in a better way. There are many areas in FinTech wherein you can develop yourself. You need to have understanding. FinTech is a very bigger ecosystem, but you need to understand how this ecosystem works how this ecosystem function. So I'll close my uh, session by that video, which I haven't shown you, but I would like to show you how neo payment or neo banks are coming up and how neo banks will be the future of banking. Let's see this video and then. Neo bank is entirely online with no physical branches and offers digital only financial services. As a direct bank, Neobank reaches customers with its mobile-first financial solutions. Considering the tech-savvy and the underbank population, Neobank is predicted to surge to 98 million users by 2024. It has become increasingly popular due to its innovative banking and financial services, attractive fees, savings and expenses monitoring, hassle-free account creation, and personalization. Neobanks are on the verge of extending measures to combat the challenges of financial inclusions and other financial services of traditional banks. With such driving features, Neobank is gradually becoming a sustainable and lucrative business model in the fintech industry. Neobank is an emerging financial tool that has an exponential demand for worldwide adoption to provide niche solutions and detangle challenges of traditional banking. So this is what Neobank is. And with this, I would like to say thanks to everyone. Thanks for attending this. Uh, I am sure you might have learned a little bit from this session. We can have many more sessions like this. You let us know what are the areas you want. Robo-advisory and wealth tech is something which we are planning for. Derivatives is something which we are planning for. But I would request all my students who are listening to me, FinTech is coming up in big way. Understand how the industry is coming. What are the skill sets which are required? Develop yourself, equip yourself, and the world is yours. So with this, if any questions are there, you can write in the chat box if you can. Um, I would appreciate the same. If not, uh, I would request Rishikesh uh, to share the other details, feedbacks and other details form on the link so that the students can share the details. Thank you. Thanks a lot.